Hi there, Alec from Vacuum Spot, showing you how to do a motor swap on a Dyson DC08. Okay, so I want to get this done in under 10, so I'm just going to whip through it. Um, off comes the bagless chamber. You need to remove your filter cover. Now, look, anytime you're doing a motor replacement, you should be changing the filter as well. There's no point doing a motor swap and putting an old filter back inside. It's just not going to work as well. Um, I forgot to grab the filters prior to starting this, so I'm just going to be putting those back in momentarily, but you should Okay, so if you want to come in here, what I'm doing is I'm removing this top filter cover. I just lever it a little bit and pull it off. Okay, and the wheels come off much the same. Just slide the screwdriver in there and then they come out. Out they go. Okay, so from here, pretty simple. We've got two screws over each wheel arch. And just screw inside there and one here as well. I'm going to try and do this so that you can see it. Now, I would say for this screw to be rusty, which it is, I'm going to guess this machine is kept somewhere near the laundry. And I know that's where builders normally put a linen cover or something like that, but if you can avoid it, it's ideal. I've seen plenty of machines ruined over the years by that extra exposure to moisture. So if possible, even the shed's probably better. I already did that one. Okay, so now the back end's all loose. Best way to do this is to remove a couple foot of lead. So that then you can just wiggle this back end off, like so, and then you move it along. And so it can sit aside without actually moving your cord retract, which makes it easier to put back together. So from here, lift out the whole motor housing. And I'm just gonna unlatch the cords from their little carriers here. Okay, that just gives me a bit more freedom with the motor unit. So each of these little four catches needs to come up. And then our lid comes off relatively easy. Okay. Alright, so at this point we just disconnect our wires and take the motor itself out of this rubber boot. Okay, so old motor out, new motor in. Now you'll notice this one has a shaft where the other one didn't. Doesn't matter with the DC08 because the shaft will fit inside this clear cap. So the only reason I'm doing this is I just happen to have an, this motor here in stock at the minute. So it um, makes it an easy choice for me. Connect up the wires. Okay. Now, thing to notice here is that we've got a locator. So you, this side doesn't have a jutting out bit, whereas these three do. Inside our motor housing, you'll also notice there's the corresponding uh, cutout there. So the easiest way to do this is actually to position your motor and put the housing on over the top rather than drop the motor into the housing. Now I'm just giving myself a bit of room with these cords because I've got these new motors come with longer cords, makes them a little bit easier to fit in and upright particularly. So now that I've got the boot in there, I'm going to turn him over and just tuck the cords in underneath. Oh. 
I don't want them getting clamped when I put the top part back on. Just make sure, yep. Underneath, I'm just checking that the nothing moved. We're going to line up our arrow towards the switch. And so then it's just a matter of, so here's our switch, here's our arrow. Everything should just neatly clip on from this point. And now, here's the part that is the, sometimes I don't know what to say, like it, it does need redoing. What we're going to do is drop this motor into the this housing. These two rubber locators here need to line up with the gaps here and here. Now I'm just going to quickly tuck the cord back in. So the easiest way is to actually sit this up and let gravity do the work of locating it. Now that is sitting in nice and firm to my feel. What I'm going to do is sit the switch in now. That has to go inside the housing. If that's not in right, the, the back end won't close on it properly. Alright, so again, lift him up. And at the same time as I'm feeding the cord back through, I'm going to lift it up and over. Now, you'll notice that we've come pretty snug around here without any significant gaps. Give that a little squeeze. And the test to make sure that the back end is on right is that your cord will retract, which it does. So from here, just a matter of popping our screws back in. And at now you can see the gap closing perfectly. I'll normally start one in the middle, then one on either side with my screws. Now at this point, you can actually just give it a quick test. Make sure that you've not made any errors and left any wires. It saves assembling the entire machine. And then if a wire has fallen off in the process of assembling any of the body, you don't have to disassemble it quite so far. And thanks to the magic of television, we're able to come back and I've got filters. So, last screw goes in. This point we put the filter cover on, so it's just your little locators go into the female part there. You just slip one on and then just give the other one a little pull. That's it. Wheels, these literally just push on. New filter, new exhaust filter. Now it's worth noting that these, the yellow part like this goes on top. And that is a Dyson DC08 motor stripped down and put back in. In how long? Oh, we don't know. About 10 minutes. <laughs> Another great tip from Alec at Vacuum Spot.